this presentation uh, takes uh, its inspira original inspiration from, from a paper that was published in 2013, is uh, Climate Change, Wine and Conservation, that had a, a strong impact, at least for, for one month on newspapers, where a, a group of, uh, uh, Lee Hanna is an ecologist, uh, and Robert Hemans is uh, a, it's a climatologist, uh, they provide the evidence according to the, the approach they use that uh, in the next future, in the next 40 years, uh, a grape wine uh, a viticultural area is expected to shift to north of Europe, uh, while the, the Mediterranean area is expected to, to leave the cultivation of, of grape wine. Uh, the prompt reaction of the physiologist uh, was that uh, it's, it's not clear, but what's, that's not true, that these authors actually used an uh, approach that was not suitable for the, this type of application. And uh, so I figured out a group of uh, climatologists and ecologists from one side, and on the other side, a group of modelers and physiologists that were somehow arguing about which was the best methods and tool to assess the climate change impact in viticulture. But let's start from the very beginning of the, the issue. The climate is changing. Here we have the draw events in terms of frequency and intensity that in, in the, the last uh, 50 years is increasing. Uh, and you see that how the Mediterranean area is already affected by this trend. On the other panel, you see the average temperature increase better. The trend per decade in the last 30 years, uh, temperature increase on annual basis. This is for uh, winter period. This is for summer period. You see that almost all Europe is affected by, by increasing temperature. Uh, what should be highlighted is that, uh, especially for summer period, the Mediterranean area is most affected by, by this, this increase in temperature. What is the main effect of this increase? Uh, I, I just uh, put some result of a paper that was produced by our coordinator uh, showing the Winkler index and Euglen index. Uh, uh, this is actually a picture showing the average in the last 60 years. You, you know that both indexes are based on temperature accumulation and uh, uh, outline uh, which are the best areas suitable for particular variety. Uh, so basically uh, over the, the southern fringes of the Mediterranean areas you see the highest value for both Winkler and Euglen index, uh, while the lowest values are in Northern Europe. Uh, this is the average of 60 years, the last 60 years. But if you, if you uh, uh, split this uh, time span of 60 years in time windows of 30 years each, we see that in the last 30 years, this, both these indexes increased uh, by, in average, uh, 200, or in some kind, in case 300 degree accumulation, and this actually uh, matters for all for for uh, grape wine cultivation. What is important? This shift, this increase in temperature, uh, is increase. Is this, this, this trend is uh, particularly effective for for cultivation uh, because exists a non-linear relationship between the climate metrics, whatever it is, growing season temperature, heat accumulation, or even cumulated rainfall uh, during the year, and a particular process. Whatever this, the process is, uh, for instance, the, the quality, uh, the yield, uh, or leaf area expansion, whatever uh, you, want, you want to consider. Uh, and you see that there is a range within each climate metric, uh, metrics within which you have the optimum for this process. Above and below uh, this threshold, the, the process 
uh, uh, is worsening. It means that uh, there is a decrease in, in final yield, the quality reduced, uh, and so on. So that's why it's important to understand if something is changing. This changes as a nonlinear relationship with the process. If uh, we do consider this very famous table produced by Dr. Gregory Jones, uh, you see that uh, he classified uh, uh, each variety of grape wine according to the best range of temperature where this variety is expected to produce the best in terms of quality. So we range from Müller to Gau that is expected to produce the best uh, uh, from 13 to 15 degrees centigrade, uh, degree, yeah, degrees, uh, 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 this is the average along all the season. Uh, from April to October is the average of the season. From, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is Pinot Noir that is in the middle, and uh, uh, another one is uh, Syrah that is uh, almost included between 17 and 19 uh, degrees, up to Nebbiolo and raisins that are expected to produce the best in the, uh, uh, in the range from 19 to 24 degrees. Uh, if there is a shift in temperature, an increase in temperature, we see that we shift the areas where each variety produces the best. And this is actually what is already observed in terms of final yield according to the temperature already affected grape wine regions. Here we, we, we have uh, some trend that are particularly evident for Northern Europe that produce an increasing yield in response to a climate change. That is, that's why uh, temperature actually is increasing. This region is become more viable for production and also quality is increasing. On the other side, uh, these areas are less affected by water, water stress, uh, and therefore this uh, promotes the production of quality, uh, in terms of quality and amount of final yield. In southern Europe, this is the case of, uh, of a site in, uh, in Spain, actually there is a decrease in trend in final yield. That's why, because uh, we have more drought, temperature are, are, are increasing too much. Uh, that's why we have this decreasing trend. On the other side of the world, we uh, observe the same for, for Australia, from, from the southern areas where uh, temperature are increasing too much and drought has affected uh, 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 the final yield. And so also in this case, we have a decreasing trend. The quality, quality is an issue difficult to define. Uh, what we observed, whatever the part of the world, uh, is that as increased the temperature, the sugar in the grape and the grape acidity uh, uh, is diverging. These indexes that may be considered as a proxy of quality are, 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 are modifying the final quality of, of, of yield, uh, producing basically unbalanced wine. Finally, what we must, we might expect from the future, uh, uh, Joao already produced some picture. This is uh, uh, just an overview of an ensemble of models to make you understand that uh, uh, here we have in, um, uh, in summer period, uh, this is for the end of the century, so uh, basically for, for, uh, for a period very, very long from from, from, from today, but uh, the, I want you point your attention of the distribution of temperature and the decrease of rainfall. You see that the Mediterranean basin, especially in summertime, will be affected by highest increase in temperature and the highest decrease in rainfall. This is what we might expect from the future. Okay. This, of course, uh, is the most sensible 
a, a period for grape wine uh, growing, and this is expected to have an impact, to have an impact on, on, on grape wine in terms of quality and final yield. How do we assess the effect of such changes on, 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 uh, on grape wine cultivation in terms of yield, but also on suitability in general? We have basically two approaches, crop modeling and empiric approaches. Both of them rely on the use of prediction for the future uh, performed by general circulation model or regional circulation models. They provide at a certain spatial resolution uh, 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 changes in temperature with rainfall on a daily time step, or even less. Basically, these results are used to feed both empiric and crop modeling approach for, for uh, assessing the impact of climate change. Uh, I want to spend some more word about uh, crop modeling. Uh, crop models, maybe the, the, the next speaker will, will address the issue, but it's, uh, in, a, in a few words, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, part, it's, it's a sketch of a reality. Try uh, to mimic the, the, the behavior of a plant uh, in response to uh, 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 environmental factors, such as uh, light rainfall in terms of climate, uh, in terms of soils. Uh, there is, uh, 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 the basic processes are the interceptor radiation by the leaves. This interceptor radiation is transformed in biomass. Biomass is partitioned to the different plant organs, the roots, the trunk, the shoots, the leaves, and finally the, the, the yield. Um, this is a so-called process-based approach. We know and we put within this simple scheme all the knowledge about uh, the physiology of the plant. What we do need to run such, such a software, so it's basically software, we need as input meteorological data minimum maximum temporal rainfall radiation. This is the minimum set to run such, such an approach on a daily time, time step. We need soil data in terms of thickness, in terms of texture. We need the crop management, how much nitrogen is given to the crop, the irrigation, the tillage, if there is a rotation, not the case of the grape one, of course. As output, we, we get the phenology, the main phases uh, of the development of the grape wine, emergence and thesis, uh, uh, grain filling, no, it's, it's uh, of course, uh, it's a berazon and maturity. We have uh, the, the dynamics in the soil of nitrogen and, uh, and water, and finally we have final yield. Uh, these are uh, the, the main data set we get the data from. This is uh, the regional circulation models that change its resolution from the very beginning of the IPCC uh, uh, report uh, that uh, at that time, maybe 20 years ago, the spatial resolution of the meteor data set was 300 kilometers by 300 kilometers. Now we have 11 kilometers by 11 kilometers. These data are used to feed the models. We have also database uh, outlining uh, the, the soil uh, in terms of texture and thickness, and this also may be used to run this model in an appropriate way. Uh, I have to say that, uh, of course, this is a general scheme that you must, you must consider that each variety has a specific coefficient regulating photosynthesis, uh, regulating phenology, regulating the impact of water and nitrogen stress on growth. So each variety has different behavior, and they may be addressed using this type of approach. Here we have some, some, some results that was a, a simulation using uh, uh, the, the STIX models, was published in 2016 by Fraga. Uh, uh, they use four regional circulation models in order to consider also the, the variability in the prediction for the future. Two scenarios, RCP 4.5 to 
this is the optimistic one, and then the RCP 8.5, the pessimistic one. They run the model sticks at the resolution of 11 kilometers with two times lies for the present and for the future. They use a soil database in order to consider the texture of the soil and so the available water content for, for, each, for each grid point. And they use a single average variety. You see that this is a picture for, uh, for the present depicting the leaf area index, how many leaves are, uh, may have the, the grape point at, at continental scale. Uh, we have the water stress, uh, of course, uh, where it ranges from zero to one. Zero, of course, it is the red area where the, the water stress is uh, 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 more present. Uh, actually, one where there is no water stress. And this, the final yield, nitrogen stress. Also, the final yield uh, uh, outlined that there is the highest impact in, uh, in southern Mediterranean areas with respect to the northern cultivated areas. And now also nitrogen stress. If you make the same simulation using the result of regional circulation models for the future, we get this, this other picture. This is for leaf area index. This is the difference from the, uh, with respect to the present period. You see that the pink area, uh, there is a show, uh, just a little impact on leaf area index, while in the other part of Europe, there is even an increase. But if you have a look at the final yield, we see that difference with respect to the present period, uh, 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 put, in evidence, put in evidence that in southern Mediterranean basin there is a negative impact of climate change on final yield with minus uh, 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 six tons per, per hectare of production, while in the rest of Europe there is even an increase. This is just an example. There are actually few examples of these approaches because it's a, a sort of time-consuming process because you have to put a number of information in it. This is uh, a simulation for, by Ferrise, 2016, using gray model uh, developed by Professor Marco Bindi. Uh, he used three regional circulation models for A, 1, B scenarios, that is, no scenarios. 30 kilometers as a resolution, the period 1981, 2010, the present period, 2021, 2050, the future period, using a single soil and a single average variety. You see that for each uh, 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 nation, uh, there is a positive or negative impact. Basically, in the southern Mediterranean region, there is a negative impact. In, in some part, uh, uh, for instance, uh, in France, uh, uh, Italy, but more or less we are stable. Croatia, in Bosnia, there is a small increase. Uh, and this is very similar to the previous picture uh, that was given, of course, as a, uh, as a wall. This is an example of empiric approaches. They re rely on, the, on a di completely different approach. Uh, Basically, we use the actual growing areas. These are the most famous growing areas uh, uh, around uh, East, Western Europe, uh, from Italy uh, to Spain to Portugal. And basically, this uh, kind of model uh, uh, make use of bioclimatic indexes. Euclid index, Winkler index, there are many. Uh, basically, this approach extract from each wine region the relevant information in terms of uh, uh, this index eh, and are able to understand if these indexes changes in the future, how the suitability will change. This is, this is an example just to give you uh, an idea that is, this approach is working on the opposite way with respect to the uh, uh, modeling approaches. With the modeling approaches, you have an a priori knowledge on how the crop performs in a particular climate. 
using empiric model, you have no an a priori knowledge. It's the model that get information from the growing areas in terms of bioclimatic indexes and then reproduce for the future once these indexes has changed to understand how can be the shift. This is just an example. Uh, for instance, very famous area, the Champagne. You see that the minimum temperature in January for the Champagne areas is included in a in quite narrow range from minus two degrees up to zero, but is, the peak is very uh, centered on uh, 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 minus 1.5. The same if you have a look at maximum temperature in July, you see that the Champagne areas has very peak centered on 23.5 degrees. The same for Ugolin index, we have about, we have about one, 1,300, uh, 400 uh, as you Uglen index. Uh, and also for the water deficit. If you have a look, for instance, for Duro region, where the group of, uh, of the, 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 the youth that come from, you see that the variability much higher. This is, for instance, from minimum temperature of January you see that the variability is more, uh, 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 it, it has not a clear peak over, over a value. The same, for instance, for maximum temperature of July, and the same for the water deficit, and the same for the Uglen index. You see that each region has a particular trend. These empiric models are able to capture, oops, are, oh no, no, we start from the very beginning now. As a particular uh, uh, shape of this distribution, the model is able to capture this trend and to reproduce for the future. These are a few examples. Uh, this is very new, produced by Santillan et al. This, this year, using two regional circulation models two scenarios, RCP 2.7, that is very optimistic, and six, working at a resolution of 50 kilometers, two period, 1950 to 1999. Three biological indexes, Uglen index, cool night index, that is basically the minimum temperature in September, and the standard precipitation evaporation index that is a sort of water balance, very, very coarse, but it's a water balance. This is not to predict how we'll shift the, the cultivation of grape wine, but to put in evidence which are the most vulnerable areas in the future. And you see, looking at the Uglen index, this is the present situation, this is what is expected for the future. We are moving in, uh, uh, for instance, in southern Europe from uh, uh, a, a warm uh, uh, situation to a very warm situation. That means that we should adopt different varieties to, to adapt to this situation. Cool night index is an index of. A cool night index. Cool night index. Uh, to, I'm too tall. I'm sorry. Uh, is, uh, is, uh, a cool night in index is a proxy of, of the, 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 the quality of final yield. And also in this case, we are moving from a, a cold situation, very cold situation, to a warm situation on the southern basin. The SPAY index is an index of water stress. And this indicated that you are moving from a dry situation to a actually very dry situation. This gives an idea of what measure of adaptation should be adopted. Basically, use of irrigation almost all over Europe, uh, changing variety over these areas, and uh, changing the quality of many wines. 
This is the, the, the first example I talked about. Uh, this was the, the, the paper of Han et al. Uh, in 2013 using a bioclimatic envelope model, basically what I talked about before. They use 17 regional circulation models to consider all the possible variability in the climate simulation. Two uh, uh, scenario, scenarios, RCP 4.5 and 8.5, they work at that resolution, downscaling the data from 50 kilometers to one kilometer. The period 1961, 2000 for the present, 2041, 2060 for the future. They use many, many biological indexes to outline the possible shift. The soil was not considered a variety, not what considered. Uh, what we get from this picture is the red areas is the areas where at the moment grape wine is cultivated and is expected to be lost in the future. In the green areas is the actual, the, the to date, only uh, grape wine cultivation that is uh, in also in the future. The blue areas is what is expected viable for grape wine cultivation in the future. So it, it's quite a dramatic uh, a picture of, uh, of, of grape wine cultivation in the future. Uh, this is uh, uh, what I produced basically in the same, in the same year. Uh, we use a random forest uh, uh, that is a machine learning approach. We use a single regional circulation model with two very old scenarios, A2 and B2, one very optimistic B2, one very pessimistic A2. We uh, downscale from uh, a resolution 250 kilometers of this regional circulation model to one kilometers with two time slices. Also in this case, we use the number of bioclimatological indexes. Uh, we did not consider the soil, we did not consider variety. But if you had the look to the present situation or, and what we expect for the future, you see that results are very similar to the previous one. The, the, this approach that is a basic uh, a machine learning approach gives some uh, explanatory capacity. So can make you understand what's going on in uh, uh, in the classification process. As an example, here we have the water deficit, and this graph depicts which is the probability to detect an area uh, covered by grape wine in response to changing the, this value of water deficit. We see that a water deficit within, uh, included between 200 and 400 is the best for grape wine cultivation. We have the same for uh, minimum temperature of January, and we see there is a clear peak of uh, two degrees, uh, uh, where is more uh, uh, the, the present grape one is more effective, and the same for Winkler index. We see that the relationship between these metrics and the probability to have grape one is not linear. So also in this case, if you are moving. Uh, uh, above and below uh, uh, this threshold, we are outside the grape wine cultivation. Uh, this is uh, the same for, for instance, uh, uh, a cool night index, the clear peak around 15 degrees, where we have the maximum probability to, de to detect grape wine. Uh, the same for uh, July, te uh, temperature of July. Also here, we have uh, 27 degrees has maximum probability to detect the grape one. And this is for the average temperature of the season. In this case, we have 70 degrees as maximum probability to, 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 to get a, a grape one cultivated areas. Finally, uh, I, just to provide a brief description of, of the many advantages and disadvantages of empiric and crop models. Of course, crop models have great explanatory capacity. So you are describing process, physiological process, and you are able to understand why a, a particular variety is not working in a particular site. 
because we have a number of output in terms of final yield, uh, uh, root depth, uh, uh, leaf area index, uh, and so on. So from this output, we are able to understand why it is not working. With, uh, with uh, uh, empiric model, you have not this capacity. The spatial resolution crop model is uh, a time-consuming uh, uh, simulation. You need many parameters uh, that range from hourly to daily time step. To run a model over an entire continent takes a lot of time. The spatial resolution of the empiric model, it's very, it's very high. It's almost one kilometer. You can use the information you have uh, for using layer at one by one kilometers, and this gives uh, the possibility to, to have uh, the impact of climate change from the local scale up to the, the continental scale. Available data, uh, I mean, for crop models, you need so many information in terms of soils, in terms of variety, in terms of management practice, if you want to have a, a reliable simulations. And this, uh, uh, many of these parameters are not available. Uh, we should make assumption to use these approaches. For empiric model, we basically use uh, climatic data that are mostly available from a number of platforms. The parameterization, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I would say it's more easy for, for uh, empiric models where you have to adjust a few parameters to obtain simulations. For crop models, you have to consider a number of variety, each of them has a particular coefficient for the phenology, for crop yield, and for, for other processes. It's, it's not very easy. I add the, 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 the effect of carbon dioxide enrichment that actually was neglected, was not considered in any empiric model, Why in crop models it may be, of course, considered to enhance uh, the photosynthetic capacity and the water use efficiency of, of the crop. So this gives an advantage of the crop model with respect to the empiric one. After that, I would like to make a synthesis. There is, of course, a mismatch between empiric and process-based. The process-based approach, are, are, of course, uh, are, are better in general because uh, they give an explanation of what's going on. Uh, in many cases, uh, empiric approaches are black box where you get the final result and that's it. You have an, an explanation why it's, and what's going on there. Another uh, point is that process-based models uh, are ap applied basically to evaluate uh, the impact of final yield. But if we ask any grower, they are not concerned at the moment for final yield, they are concerned for the quality. Actually, the empiric model using bioclimatological indexes mostly rely on suitability for quality. This is a huge difference. Today, it is not possible to compare the results of empiric and, and process-based models because we, in the, the short survey I proposed, uh, they use different regional circulation model at a different spatial resolution, different time slices. It's, in, it's not easy to compare the result to understand what's the differences in terms of impact. And so, therefore, it is not possible to understand if empiric model overestimate the impact of climate change as proposed in the very first uh, 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 slides that with, with people complaining about the impact of climate change, that is too, too much for them. So, what, what, what the idea is to make a comparison between crop models and empiric models using a common platform, using the same regional circulation models, same scenarios, same time slices, to understand what, what is the, the, the difference between the, the impact provided by the, the two systems. And then a system, a, a synthesis. Uh, we should use crop model to understand which are the actual 
by climatological index to be used to feed empiric models. Uh, this would help the empiric model to produce reliable impact on, on grape and cultivation because, of course, uh, they are able to work at the highest spatial resolution, moving from the very local scale to continental scale. So you can have a broad picture of what's going on in the future for, for grape one suitability for grape one cultivation. So this is the end of the question. Okay, so thank you, Marco, for, for your presentation. Uh, we have uh, five minutes before the break, so if you want to make a uh, question, please raise your hand and uh, ask Marco for more detail, curiosity, and so on. If you want to make the question in Italian, you can make in Italian, then there is a Okay, it's not really necessary, the translation, because we speak Italian. So, as, as you want, as you prefer. Prego. Good afternoon. My name is Federico. Maybe the question sounds very ridiculous to the whole auditorium. Um, but I'm, I'm um, confronted with the earth work. And so therefore, uh, even the type of question I just repeat may sound very ridiculous to you. But uh, observing, for example, the Hanna, which was performed in uh, 1913, uh, excuse me, 2013, it shows that uh, there will be a loss of uh, cultivating area over Italy. I do not recall if the resolution was about 50 kilometers or was maybe worse, or maybe, maybe one weaker. One kilometer. Yeah. Uh, which makes me wondering even more. Because, uh, for example, looking at all the coastal area, for example, where Bulgaria lies, yeah right there. Or uh, on the other side, uh, uh, you have all the Apulian vineyards. Yeah. It sounds like uh, we will lose uh, all the Chianti Classico, maybe Montalcino, and Bulgari will still there. Uh, how come? I mean, uh, based on our empiric uh, okay, yeah, this experience. Is, uh, uh, if there is a, a place where... Uh, this is uh, actually... Oh, thank you. Oh, please. Thank you. I'm done. Okay. This is one of the uh, uh, critics of the work of Hanna uh, because the, they actually do not consider an in general uh, uh, empiric model uh, 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 do not. The plasticity of grip one to respond to the climate. They if you if you recover if you remind remind the this this picture they use this picture to frame each variety in a particular time frame in particular uh, window and uh, in Castellini and Chianti later on. It's no wonder. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I missed the, the, the question. So it shows that the long before we start Okay, this is a, a, yeah, this is a. You uh, can see the Elba, a, Io. This is a, a I think you should not look at particular situation, okay. but this is... 
okay. the general picture okay. of, of the so shift. So I go back to the ridiculousness of the question. No, 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 it's not ridiculous, but it's a, it's a common critic to such an approach. Because, for instance, if you have a look at to the, the central part of, uh, of, uh, uh, of Spain and Portugal, here they do not consider that at the moment there is cultivated area, so they are missing part of the information on the hottest areas. Uh, and that's why they mislead some, uh, some simulations. And that's it, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Antonello Bonfante from CNR. Just a little uh, question about uh, how you feel with the, your, when you apply the modeling, simulation modeling, and then you want to say something also on processes uh, between soil and plants. No? You say we use uh, some database on Europe, and uh, uh, obviously you know that uh, these databases are not so detailed for the modeling, and uh, in which way you think that we can overlap this problem in a modeling application? It's uh, okay for, for very local application, it's uh, of course, it's a, it's a problem to use database that for the soil are 10 by 10 kilometers that makes no sense to, to apply on a farm level. But if you, if you use such an aggregation for continental scale, I think you are almost on the right way. It is a scale problem, it's probably the same of the last question, a scale, scale problem, resolution of scale. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, no, just because uh, I think probably it's better to use uh, empirical model uh, than uh, uh, process-based model when uh, you have a high uncertainty in uh, soil description physics in this case. Probably yes, not. yes. The, you, this is actually the, the, the w w what I had in mind at the very beginning, beginning to find a sort of, uh, 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 to fill the gap between process-based and, uh, and empirical approaches. To use uh, a good simulation of water balance using uh, the soil informations and evapotranspiration simulations uh, on a monthly scale. Uh, as you can see, most of the empiric models do not consider the impact of carbon dioxide on evapotranspiration models, uh, evapotranspiration processes, and this is a, a sort of a bias in the, in the, in the empiric future, approach. So, new measurement <laughs> and improvement of these uh, layers, no? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, and yeah. also uh, the scenarios that I think the next two years will be at two kilometers in Europe. Yeah. Some, some downscaling uh, procedures are already working at two by two kilometers, three by two kilometers. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other question? Okay. There is a, one question from the table. It is not about uh, modeling. As uh, we know that uh, temperature is already changing a lot. For instance, in northern Italy, for sure, in summer we have something like a couple of degrees higher than it was in one generation ago. Do we have any empirical evidence on, of the impact, of the current impact of this climate change on, on, on vineyards, um, I mean, uh, uh, on, on wine quality or on, on, uh, on, on uh, the amount of uh, yield or any other indices that can be useful to assess uh, what is going on uh, on, on wine production? Because yeah. for sure I know yeah. that there is a growth in, in alcohol rate, yes. for instance, in uh, Sangiovese in, in yes. Romagna, this because is, it's uh, is for getting sure. hotter and hot. There is uh, actually no, not in literature, there is not so much information on that. There is a very interesting paper on um, Emilia Romagna mm -hmm. showing a positive trend in the last 30 years of grape wine yield. But this was associated to a technological trend rather than to, to, to climate change. To climate change. 